Hi guys, it's nice to find the media. How are you doing? Not so bad, thank you very much. We're doing alright. Yeah, very pleased to be back at the Animation Festival the last day of 2008. So, uh, well to another visit. Looking forward to it. Well, that'd be helpful. Uh, could you just say your name for the video? My name's Hamish, I play guitar in my name, right? And my name's Aaron, and I'm a singer. Um, you recently brought out um, a map of all our failures. Uh, what are the main lyrical concepts of the album? Uh, well, it's quite varied actually. There's no real single point we're trying to make. Uh, we cover, uh, I guess, classic rock areas of doom, death, failed love, tragedy, melancholy, <laughs> all the dark, miserable things that actually make us happy. Um, we touch upon religion from time to time, sexuality. Um, it's quite broad, and you could say it's a little bit negative, perhaps. Um, but it's you know it's what Madame and Bride do. We've been around 23 years doing this sort of thing. We're familiar now with what we touch upon. We're not likely to stray too far off the path. This is what we're good at. We're going to stick to it. Yeah. Um, how do you feel that um, a map of all our failure is, um, differs from uh, previous Madame and Bride releases? Us. A lot of depth and diversity in this particular album. We actually started writing this album as long ago as three years back. We started doing the first uh, um, you know, riffs and first you know, kind of song structures, some of which have ended up actually being in the album. And uh, we started finding ourselves going down a much dark, more extreme kind of uh, route. And then um, we actually put the album on hold at that point in time and ended up doing the Bargis to Whitney, much darker, more savage based. So we just kind of to exercise those particular demons, came back around the other side of it, having done something darker and more horrific, more right, bringing back a more epic, classical, way down bright style, but we've kind of been a bit affected by uh, what we've done. So there's, there's a lot more scope, I, I think, in this particular album. The dark funeral bits so are all more so. There's lighter moments, and so there's just more of everything. Um, how would you describe uh, My Dying for Bride's sound to uh, someone who's never listened to the band's music at all? Oh, it's down, right? uh, not happy. Not happy. You no, know, tragedy is always a good word. I'd say it's a uh, you know, very uh, cathartic journey through some uh, you know, very dark, depressing places. But not without hope completely. And that's uh, what makes it more tragic sometimes because there can be hope and then it's just taken away from that deal. Um, what song do you feel defines the band as a whole? From the new album or from the whole song? Your entire discography. I mean, we're opening up the set tonight, so it's obviously an important song. It's the opening track off the album. Um, and I think it was put there specifically because it contains quite a lot of the elements people would expect to find in a classic way down the track. With doom metal stuff, death metal, with melodic stuff. Vocals are all over the place, high, low, um, whispering. Uh, it's got a good selection of just what you would expect to see and hear from my dying bride. So, from the new album, I would definitely pick that one. It's a very comprehensive song. Um, you said earlier uh, that the new album uh, is taking three years ago. Some of the songs go back as, uh, three years ago. Um, so, you know, it begs the question, how does a typical songwriting session between the band go? Well, thankfully we adopt uh, a few different uh, uh, yeah, methods of writing. Uh, in some instances, there'll be uh, you know, some uh, particular musical ideas and motives that uh, start with one person that, uh, and then brought to the rest of the band and embellished further that way. Or alternatively, we take uh, inspiration from uh, you know some text or story idea that Aaron's come up with first. And uh, there's a, in some cases songs are written and rewritten as they develop. Uh, other times a song's pretty much as it was originally done in one very straight focus kind of way. So the big begins you know maintain depth and diversity of our work is that we use, utilise these different writing methods and use all of them rather than just one single set formula which could run the risk of covering similar ground. 
Uh, when it comes to uh, writing the lyrics, uh, where do you guys draw your inspiration from? Anywhere, really. Not really literature. I, I do read a lot of books. Um, but really, you allow yourself to be influenced by many different things. Uh, some things more so than others. And as I say, books are a good source of inspiration. But, you know, I'm a bit of a movie buff as well. I do like to check out as many films as possible. But even meeting people who've got a story to tell, um, that if it's interesting enough, it'll log itself in the back of your brain, and then when you come to write the lyrics in the middle of the night, one winter's night, it'll just make its way to the forefront, and you'll, you'll, you'll remember it. But you'll, you can't rip off anybody. You know, if you've got an idea that's been inspired by something, it has to be an idea that spawns your own ideas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, from anyway, in the early days I would strictly read poetry and hope to be inspired along those lines. But over the last few years, I will read anything and I will actually watch any movie that's been recommended. Um, not looking for inspiration, if it just happens to turn up, that's fine. If not, that's fine. Um, and I just I'm always making notes. And when it comes to actually putting an album together, I refer back to my notes. And the inspirations may well be written down there. And again, they're the seed. And out grows a brand new My Dying Bright Song. Yeah. Um, um, going back to what you just said about uh, the movie part of the film part of the if you could replace the soundtrack to any film with uh, My Dying Bride's music, which one would it be and why? The Liberty. Great film, it's a bit dark and very uh, like That's a good choice. I was, that was, all, uh, that was just mulling over Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> that was just mulling over Let the Right One In, but uh, but really it's such a beautiful and like, constructive thing. And I, I know I wouldn't want to touch it really. That's one of my most favorite films in recent years. No, Libertine's a great choice. Uh, Last question then. Uh, this is one that I'm dying to know the answer to. Who has the better metal scene, in your opinion, Yorkshire or Lancashire? Well, I have to I've never lost touch with the metal scene over the last, you know, last few years. I loved it when I was younger because there wasn't that many people doing it and you could latch onto them uh, in the old style way of, of uh, tape trading. These days, everybody's got a face and it's just seen a humongous, which is good. It's hard to keep track of who's doing what now. But yeah, it shows me off like doing that line. Mm. I mean, Lancashire always go, that's a good spots, bands, I mean, just straight off the bat, thinking about all the um, bands like Dan and Visions and you know, Mary and Black in the early 90s. And, um, so, you know, there's, there's some people out there and out there, but, um, not being as involved in the local scene as much, so um, I certainly wouldn't want to be picking one over the other. I mean, there's, uh, you know, you've got, you've got you know, the likes of Picate, but probably more Manchester based now anyway, but then of course in Yorkshire, but I don't need to start listing the fans from Yorkshire. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for your time, guys, and uh, have a great show tonight. Thank you, Rob. Cheers.